Hello, model-based testing is a radically different approach to QA. It allows software development teams to quickly generate comprehensive test suites, both manual and automated, helps eliminate communication gaps between QA, dev, and product teams, radically reduces test maintenance efforts, and increases overall team agility. Wow, this sounds unrealistic! Well, unrealistic is a big word for a talking rubber ducky made of wool. Hmm, okay. But you're right. It does sound a bit unrealistic, but it's not, it's just new, ish. This is why in this video, we'll introduce model-based testing, MBT, and show you why we at Provengo believe it's an approach that software teams should consider. I invite you all to put aside what you already know about testing, and uh, let's dive into model-based testing. First off, let's ask ourselves what is a model. Well, a model is really a useful description of a complex thing. Think, for example, about a house model, right? House is a big complex thing, and house model is detailed just enough that we understand what's happening there, right? How are the rooms arranged? How a dog can run between places? But it doesn't contain all the details of the house, right? I mean, there's no like food in the fridge, for example, or stuff like that. So for software. Models are slightly more complex and a bit less tangible, so let's ask ourselves instead, how do we get to a train station? So, suppose you walk in your neighborhood, just strolling around in the afternoon, and some tourist asks you, how do I get to a train station? Well, there are two ways you can direct them to the train station. One, you just give them a set of detailed instructions. You go all the way to the tree over there, turn left, go across the bridge, over the fountain, blah, blah, blah. There's a very long detailed description of what they need to do. It's easy to do, but it's very lengthy and, and a bit tedious. The other option is you give them a map, right? So you give them a map, you tell them, these are the train stations around, you're here, you just, you know, knock yourself out. And there are many ways that they can get to a train station, right? And the map has all these ways. So if you were to give them a, a detailed route of how to get there, that route would be on the map, but there are many other routes there as well. So you basically gave them a lot of options. You even gave them options that don't really make sense, but they're there, right? It's suppose they want to visit the entire neighborhood while getting to the train station. So there's a lot of things a map gives them that a detailed route doesn't. So. Going back to testing software, giving someone a long list of instructions of how to get somewhere is like we test today. This is a single test scenario. It's very detailed, it's hard to maintain, and it breaks easily. But it's easy to do, and it's easy to follow. On the other hand, giving someone a map is basically giving them a model of all possible test scenarios and letting them choose which scenarios they want to run. Models are used today in many aspects of software engineering. For example, UML sequence diagrams are used when you want to see how a few modules in a certain system would collaborate. If there's one thing you need to take from this video, is that model-based testing allows you to go from this to this. Basically, instead of you writing a lot of test scenarios, you create a machine that writes the test scenarios for you. And all you have to do in order to direct the test scenarios you know, to some specific area of interest is just adjust the machine so that these are the tests that it's generating. Now, just because the tests are generated doesn't mean you have to execute them. You can store them somewhere, and when you want to test a specific aspect of your system, you just select the appropriate tests and execute them at the point of interest. Now, Let's look at how QA works today. This is obviously a simplified schematic description, but it's close enough to reality to be useful. So first, there's this requirement that comes along, right? Now, I'm sure that in your company, requirements are non-ambiguous, easy to understand, come printed in lovely font on a paper that, that also smells good. But you have to believe me that in some companies, it's not exactly that, and, and you get a requirement, and then maybe a Slack message, and a few instant messages, and emails, and maybe another Slack message. I mean, you end with a lot of text that's 
somehow organized and as a QA you have to look at this pile and understand what needs to be tested. Right? So after you've done that, we generate test cases. Okay? Test cases can be um, created for manual testing, they can be created for automated testing. But we basically have these uh, test scripts and then we execute them either manually or automatically. And then another message comes along with a change of requirements. And what you have to do is go through all the test cases, see which cases changed and which didn't, and then run everything again. And it is exactly this scenario where a single requirement comes along and you have to redo your entire set of test cases that makes software teams choose between good test coverage and being agile. Because if you have a lot of tests, then you have good coverage, good quality, and whenever a change comes along, you also have a maintenance problem. And you, if you don't have a lot of tests, then changes don't cost much, but you also have a quality problem. This is why we normally have test pyramids and all these kind of techniques that kind of like help with it, but don't really solve the problem. Now, let's look at how this works with model-based testing. Model-based testing starts with the same thing, requirements. But instead of directly generating test cases, the team creates a model describing these requirements. From this model, test cases are generated automatically. Now the model can be enriched with automation data and actuation data such that we can switch between manual execution to automated execution and vice versa. But the main part of the model, the business flows and the description of the requirements are in the model and they stay unchanged even when we switch execution targets. Now, when a change comes along, it can be a requirement change in the business flow or it can be an implementation change all the same for us. The Q18 just updates the model to reflect the change and then throws all the tests uh, that we had and regenerate a new updated set of tests. This way, maintenance efforts are reduced to a minimum while test coverage becomes more comprehensive and actually takes less effort. So, let's see how model-based testing affects QA. First of all, QA gets to focus on the interesting parts, test cases, test scenarios, rubber duckies, and doesn't have to chase as much after changes in scripts and automation and script maintenance, stuff like that. You get a huge boost in your productivity because of this. There's a dramatic reduction in maintenance effort, as we've seen, if any changes comes along, you just throw everything you had, regenerate and it all works. We can optimize functional coverage because we have this machine, right, that generates tests. We can direct it towards generating tests that check specific functionality or we can say we want a test suite that covers all these functionalities and it's something that's very easy to do because you're not writing the test, you're just directing your machine. Also, we can give a detailed feature set and good coverage for root cause analysis. Now this calls for a new graphic. So here's a new graph. You see, suppose we had a test that fails. In a traditional way, what we have is just a test, right? Coming back to the maps we had before, it's just a route. We went, we followed all the instructions, and then we hit some roadblock. There's nothing we can do. We don't have the map. But in model-based testing, you have the map. So you know that these tests, actually they have two tests that check the same thing, or maybe they converge on something or if a single test doesn't work, we can do all kinds of tests that are you know, adjacent to it or are similar to it. And this way we can tease out all these root causes. So we can do a much better work in reporting bugs and we can help the developers fix the errors much, much more efficiently. So we've seen how using MBT affects the work of the QA team. But how does it affect the rest of the software team? Well, first of all, now QA can collaborate in a much tighter fashion with the product because QA really holds an actionable model of the requirements, which is what product really work on, right? So QA can generate diagrams of business flows and they can verify, like formally verify that 
none of the flows breach any kind of regulations or company guidelines or stuff like that. We improve agility because now we can generate tests whenever we need uh, to do a pivoting or requirement change or anything like this. The fact that you have a lot of tests doesn't hold you back from, from doing the changes. You just throw the test and generate them again. So agility is improved. There's faster time to market. The, the entire communication between the teams in, in the, the product and the QA and development is improved because it doesn't work just on text you have a model that can be uh, visualized and verified and uh, played with so everybody knows that they work on the correct thing. This results basically in faster time to market, less lost time because of confusion and overall improvement of everything. Um, so it's probably a good idea. Right?